This is a basic position in the dragon, and here white is normally playing the move 7f3. But we're just briefly going to discuss what happens if white sort of, well, forgets to play the move f3. Well, actually in the World Championship match in 1995 between Anand and Kasparov, Anand played queen d2 in this position. And, well, I think he was trying to tempt Kasparov to play the move knight g4. Well, that's a very logical way of sort of exploiting queen d2. Let's see what happens. Knight g4. Well, I think a logical move would be bishop g5, knight c6, knight to b3. And, well, I think next he will play f3, so it makes sense to sort of kick the uh, white bishop immediately. Bishop h5, so bishop h4, g5, bishop to g3. Actually, if this position looks quite familiar to you, then, well, it's probably because you have seen this position. Knight c3, a6. This is a knight off. But there's actually been quite some games with bishop e3, knight g4, here, h6, here, g5, bishop g3, let's say bishop g7, and if queen d2, knight c6, knight b3. Well, that was exactly the position we had, but just having black having the extra tempo, a, a6. So actually, I think that, well, Anand had a, he had a funny little trick, and he was trying to sort of uh, surprise Kasper a bit, so I think there's nothing wrong that white plays queen d2 in this position. He gives blacks an extra option, but it's not a particularly good option. Well, I think white players can do that if they want to sort of be a bit bit tricky, but I think Kasparov also said that when Anand played 7 queen d2, he got quite sort of optimistic because, well, Anand was giving him an extra possibility, but if Anand really had some strong idea in the sort of main lines, well, then most likely he wouldn't have given him this possibility. So instead of sort of being a bit surprised, Kasparov said he got some confidence from it. Well, that could be sort of something he said after the game, or maybe he was trying to psych his opponent during a match. Who knows? Anyway, 7 queen d2 is definitely possible. What about the move 7 bishop c4 then? Well, I think here, like after 7 queen d2, it's best just to not be provoked. But uh, it's possible to play the move knight g4 here as well. Um, why is going to follow up giving a check? Of course, it looks a bit illogical that, um, well, you play bishop c4, and after knight g4, then you're going to go bishop b5 check. But the point, well, compared to having the queen on d2, is that the, now this, the queen is actually eyeing this knight on g4. Well, you can say it's pro protected by the bishop, but the problem is that black doesn't really have a move here. Well, bishop d7, for instance, would be a blunder losing a piece, sort of exploiting this pin. And the same, you can't go knight d7, as the um, knight will also be hanging. So actually here you have to play the move king f8. Well, this is quite a quite an interesting move. Um, I would think that in this position, well, there has been some games where, let's say, queen d2, but I think here you can take takes, and then knight d7 to, to e5. Well, I would say that in this position, after king f8, there is two quite critical moves. An interesting attempt is the move queen f3. Well, the idea is when you take here, you'll take back with the pawn, and you will try and sort of castle and attack directly in the f-line. Actually, in this position, quite surprisingly, the most common move played by black in this position is the move knight d7. Well, that has quite a, a downside to that. After knight e6 check, well, you're hitting the king and the queen, and you're just winning immediately. But this is the trick white has been playing for, and I would say quite successfully. I think, in, well, in this position, I think the best idea is to play the move knight c6. Well, it's a pawn sacrifice, but you get quite some compensation. But I think here... Well, why should take, take back? Well, the point is, the reason he's taking is he doesn't want to, to allow the knight to go to e5. So I think he should take, and when he takes back, he should castle, attacking f7, and let's say queen e8. Well, then you can take the pawn here on c6. Well, maybe there is some compensation here, but somehow I would really rather not play like this. So I think after queen f3, well, an interesting move would be to play the move knight c6 immediately. Well, let's say... If he takes it, then we're going to take back. And now castling has much less sense. There's no attack on f7. So let's say he takes here immediately. But actually, this is not so good. Now you can take here with check. And when he takes back, there is the nice move, queen c7. And the knight somehow, well, if the knight goes away, c3 is, is going to be hanging. So I think here, black is probably doing okay. So I would say after queen f3, the move knight c6 is quite nice. Well, you can say maybe, maybe he should try something like long castling. But well, then we're going to take an e3, and I'm going to put the knight on e5. 
Or you can say also maybe he should try short castling, but then, well, exactly the same will happen. Something like takes, takes, and the knight to e5. So, queen f3, knight c6, I think it's pretty decent for, for black. Probably the best move in this position is to play short castle. Then actually, I don't know really if I can re recommend playing like this with um, um, with black. An interesting attempt is to play takes, takes, and now the move bishop to e5. The computers really think white is quite better here, but maybe they underestimate how solid black's position actually is. Well, you want to play f6 next, then you have created a stronghold here, and you're going to put your king uh, to g7. Of course, well, you know, it's going to take a while before you're fully developed. On the other hand, I mean, these pawns, they're not going to be able to crash through black's position in any way, in any sort of possible manner, and you have completely blockaded the e5 square. So maybe actually the white attack would run out of steam here. I think, well, it's an interesting position, but it's really a stylistic choice. I, well, I could see black doing okay here, but some players would be pretty afraid. Another interesting possibility is to play the move bishop e5 in this position. Well, simply brutally attacking the h2 pawn. Well, should he play h3? Then we will happily take an e3 and play king g7. So I would think that simply he has to gambit this pawn. Uh, an interesting move is queen d2. This has been played in some correspondence games. If you take with check, well, you have to move the king and something like this, f4 with initiative. So I think in this game, they took here an h2. You played f, well, they played f4, something like this, and rook takes f1. Well, you have sacrificed an exchange on a pawn, but, uh, well, the black position is also pretty undeveloped. Well, I think the game ended in the draw, and I would be a bit surprised if white was, well, maybe enough compensation, but better, I would, I would be surprised. But it's an interesting position. And, uh, well, yeah, somehow, after queen d2, maybe it's not so good. After bishop c4, I think you can play knight g4. And it leads to quite interesting and, and sort of uh, fun positions. But most likely, if you play someone who's uh, playing the system, he has studied them. Well, if you think your opponent has just blundered, and then knight g4 is a good way of punishing it. But else, it's probably likely he sort of uh, studied this. But uh, even so, I think with these small pointers, you can get an interesting position with black. So, well, go ahead, play knight g4 in, in this position.